Today I'm going to be teaching you how to create an environment gradient based on any image. It's super easy to do, so let's jump right into it. All right, well, we have our new Blender file here. I'm going to delete the cube and I'm going to delete our light. Add a plane and we're going to scale that up to 10. S10 is a shortcut for that. Add a sphere and we're going to scale that up to 8. We're going to go ahead and switch to cycles. I'm going to turn my GPU on and we're actually going to go ahead and go into our rendered view. Now we're going to reset our camera for a better view inside our sphere. As you can see, these are the correct values you'll want up here. So for Y, you're going to want 2. And for the X rotation value, you're going to want 90 degrees. Now here's the fun part. We can go ahead and select any image we want for our environment texture. So I went ahead to Unsplash, which gives you royalty-free images, and I typed in colorful, and I found this awesome image. So I'm going to go ahead and download this so we can use it in our Blender file. So now let's add our environment texture. I'm going to go over here to this little world icon and click on the little dot next to color. And it's going to give us these options here, and we're going to select environment texture. And then once we have that selected, everything's going to turn pink. And what we need to do is open our file that we downloaded. So I'm going to go to my downloads and select that file. And now, as you can see, we have our environment texture loaded up in here. Now we're going to add a glass shader to our sphere. So go ahead and select the sphere, go to the materials tab, make a new material, and let's create a glass shader. And then for the IOR, I'm going to type in 1.2 and I'm going to keep the roughness at 0.5. Now in our modifiers tab, we're going to add a subdivision surface modifier and we're going to set both values to 3. And then we're going to right click on our sphere and click shade smooth. And there's just one more thing you have to do. Go to this little triangle, green triangle icon, click on normals and just click auto smooth. And that's just going to give us a really smooth finish on our glass sphere here. Now at this point, I want to go ahead and snap to my camera view. So for all my numpad, if I just press zero, it'll snap right to my camera view. Now, if you don't have a numpad on your keyboard, you can go up to view, cameras, active camera. And if you click that, it'll snap right to your camera view. We're gonna select our plane, give that a new material. And I'm just gonna give this a high metallic value and a lower roughness value. Perfect. I actually went ahead and reset my camera because I realized it was in the wrong spot. So just go ahead and update your values to what you see right here and this will be the perfect positioning for the next step. Let's add an object to our scene. I'm going to go ahead and click Add Mesh Monkey. And as you can see our monkey's down here. We actually want it to be a little bit higher in our scene. So I'm going to scale it down using the S shortcut and I'm just going to move it up towards the center of our scene right here. That looks perfect. I'm going to teach you a little trick on how to copy modifiers. So we want this monkey to be very smooth, just like the sphere. So what if we could just copy the sphere's modifier onto the monkey? To do that, click the monkey, and then holding shift, select the sphere. Now, do control L, and you're going to get this little menu, and you just want to click copy modifiers. And what that's going to do is it is going to apply the modifier to our monkey as well. So now we have a nice smooth monkey model right here. Now let's apply a shader to our monkey. So go to our shading tab or our materials tab, click a new, and then I'm just going to bump up the metallic on this, turn the roughness down quite a bit, and then there's a setting right under roughness called anisotropic. I'm just going to turn that all the way up. And now don't forget to shade your monkey smooth and go ahead and enable auto smooth shading under normals. And that is the kind of effect you're going to get right there. Now let's add some depth of field to the camera to get an even more blurred background. So select our camera go into the camera settings and check mark depth of field and then with this little eyedropper you want to click that and select our monkey and now set the f-stop to 5 and those are the settings you'll need for the camera now something to keep in mind is that you can actually hide or show the plane for more interesting effects so I'm actually gonna hide the plane for the render and the viewport so I'm gonna deselect both of those icons right there and I'll show you how we can get even more control over our environment texture right here let's hop over to the shading tab and let's go to this little area right here where it says object and we want to select world. And now so we can see what we're doing, we're going to go ahead and snap to our camera view up here yet again. And we're going to go into rendered view. So now we can see exactly what we're doing with our nodes. So I'm going to zoom out where the nodes are right here and we're going to want to add two nodes to here. Now the two nodes that we're going to want to add are texture coordinate and mapping. So I'm going to go ahead and type in texture coordinate and I'm going to type in mapping. And now what we want to do is we want to plug in the generated slot into the vector and then our vector into our image vector. So now what we can do is we can actually rotate our background image to our liking to match any angle we want. Let's say we don't like this lighting right here. I will just change the Z value and now we have a completely different lighting setup with that same blurred background. 
So this gives us much more control over our environment textures and this also works with HDRIs as well. I'm gonna hop back over to our layout tab and I'm gonna go ahead to our render settings. I'm gonna go ahead and give us 300 samples because you really don't need much. I'm gonna turn off denoising and then I'm gonna go into our layer properties here and I'm gonna enable denoising data. And now what we wanna do is head over to our compositing tab. We're gonna click on use nodes and I'm gonna add a denoising node. And what this is gonna do is allow us to easily denoise our image and we're gonna get a better result here. So let's go ahead and plug in our de denoising normal to the normal and our albedo to the albedo. Oops, just like that. That's exactly what you want and now we're actually ready to render. So I'm gonna go ahead and render this out. Looks like it's gonna take about 20 seconds or so and then we're gonna be able to see the result. Even less time than that, perfect. And it took about nine, se nine seconds and 43 milliseconds. And I think it looks great. So now guys, remember you can go ahead into your nodes under shading and you can completely change any um, aspects of the environment like the angles and such. So I'm gonna go back to our layout and I'm just gonna show you a couple more examples of how when you swap out an image, you get a completely different result. So I'm gonna go to my downloads and let's just go ahead and select this image. Now you have a completely different blurred background and if you pop open this little part right here where the arrow is, remember you can completely adjust anything about this background. So I'm just rotating it to get a completely different result. That looks kind of cool. So you could go with something like that or you could be like, ah, you know what, I wanna try a completely different image. Let's try this. Completely different result, does not have to be an HDRI, you can just use an image and you're gonna get incredible results every time just with that glass sphere around your environment. So guys, that's the tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you learned anything. If you have any questions, please go ahead, like, comment, and subscribe, all the good stuff. And go ahead and reach out to me if I can help you in any way. Enjoy. I hope this was useful. And thank you so much for watching.